The story of Ermia is not just about the birth of an organization, but it's also about the birth of our profession, which is of great value in higher education. In the 1960s, there were no higher education risk managers. There were insurance managers. As student protests escalated during that turbulent decade, so too did the perception of risk on campus, which led to a rapid rise in insurance rates. All universities faced these issues, but two individuals, William Houston of the University of Wisconsin and Rodney Pfeiffer of the University of Pennsylvania, realized that communication between universities in business matters could be beneficial. In April 1966, the first meeting of the Western Group, really a group representing 15 Midwestern schools, met. In the following June, the Eastern Group of seven schools met. The two groups held their first joint meeting in 1969 and officially combined in 1970 with 60 member universities to form UMIA, the University Insurance Managers Association. Their goal? To change insurance companies' exaggerated perception of risk on campuses that was created by media coverage. By 1976, UMIA had grown and on campus, insurance managers were acquiring new responsibilities and titles in the emerging profession of risk management. Our members were the first generation of higher education risk managers, and today, Ermia continues to serve and advance the profession. Ermia's greatest strength was, and is, our supportive member community. And that was my first conference, and that was like in 1982 in Birmingham, Alabama. And I was brand new to risk management, and it was so impressive to me to see all the people there, many of the founders of Ermia were there and talking about risk management. We had representatives from the London market, which I had never been exposed to. It was just, uh, the networking there was unbelievable. Members are dealing with some very complicated risks but they no longer have to face them alone. Through Ermia, there is a network of support and avenues for learning. When I came to work for Penn State, I had 20 years of experience in manufacturing, in risk management, and I thought I had seen one of everything for the company that I worked for, which was in the Fortune 100, until I came to work for Penn State, where the child care center shares a driveway with the nuclear reactor. Today, Armia's membership has grown tenfold from those early days and reflects the full diversity of humankind. Armia's membership is international in scope and unique in character. Armia voted to bring affiliates into the organization. And the affiliates coming into the organization has been very, very wonderful. They have provided so many benefits and they have given us immediate availability and accessibility to the services that we need as risk managers. Permia outgrew its original volunteer structure in the 1990s and added paid staff to run day-to-day -day operation. The current national office as we know it, though, was established in 2005 with Jenny Whittington as our first hire. She still leads our administrative team and is the liaison to our member leadership. Today, Ermia members enjoy a variety of virtual and person-to-person -person educational opportunities. Ermia also connects members with resources through the Ermia network, our higher education risk management risk inventory, and core competency guides, a career center, insurance programs, association publications, a peer review service, and more. What risk might we face in the next 50 years? I think artificial intelligence and automation, the continuing risks of cyber risk and breaches, cloning and genetics, programmable cars, the autonomous cars, climate change and the effects of that are going to get even worse. As we celebrate Ermia's first 50 years, 
We look forward to advancing the profession of higher education risk management to meet future challenges.